I've been waiting for London to get slightly less depressingly overcast to film a video, and now it's far too sunny, so Fortuna spins downward. No. This is John Kennedy Tools, A Confederacy of Dunces, and in true Ignatius J. Riley form, I am wearing a flannel nightshirt. It's not a nightshirt, that was a lie. This book was published in 1980, 11 years after the author's death by suicide. His mum got this published for him posthumously, which makes her a whole lot better than the mother in this story. It's about a 30-year-old morbidly obese, well-educated man who lives at home with his mum in New Orleans and basically spends all of his time locked in his room writing. Ignatius is so superior to everybody. In fact, I've written in my notes he's five steps ahead of the world when actually he's about 50 steps ahead of the world. He is so ludicrously absurd. I don't even know how he made it to the age of 30 without getting put in jail or somebody poisoning him. At the start of the book there's a bit of an incident which means that the family needs money and his mother sends him on off to work. And lots of crazy shenanigans ensue. He works for an office and then gets fired when he tries to cause an uprising within the lower ranks of the staff. <laughs> and then he starts working as a hot dog vendor where he eats more than he sells. I've got to admit, I forced myself to read this book, which is a really, really bad mindset going into it. Up to about halfway through, I was just really annoyed by all of the characters and I couldn't understand the purpose of it at all. But then I came around to its satirical nature and by the end, I just thought it was brilliant. The characters in this book are every single stereotypic character trope you can think of. There's the oblivious scholar, the doting and erratic mother, the try-hard but inept police officer, the flamboyant, carefree homosexual, the defensive but humorous negro, disdainful best friend, self-serving corrupt bar manager, the challenging coquette. I could go on and on. All these characters are so stereotypically one-dimensional and all of their relationships are one-dimensional and not a single one of them has has a redeeming quality, we only see the negative qualities of these people. But especially Ignatius, they're, they're oddly endearing. Like, you hate them, but you also sort of love them. It's not all from Ignatius's point of view, actually. It jumps between the characters in this web. You see a wider scope of what life in New Orleans was like. But as these storylines kind of intermingle and converge, you expect everything to be wrapped up neatly with a little bow. Um, and it's not, which I think was very refreshing when you kind of thought that it was leading that way. There are a couple of unresolved storylines, but not unsatisfying. Finally. Seriously, everything that Ignatius says is just gold. Optimism nauseates me. It is perverse. Since man's fall, his proper position in the universe has been one of misery. And I'm definitely going to try and reintroduce the word mongoloid into my vocabulary. <laughs> so this has been a video about John Kennedy Tools, A Confederacy of Dunces. If you've read it, tell me what you think about it. And if you haven't, has this made you want to read it or not want to read it? I will see you in a couple of days for my November book haul. Bye.